it. I said, I'm back now. So um, please like and subscribe, guys, if you guys haven't already. Welcome back to the channel, to Karma. And like I was mentioning, um, we're going to continue on with the chakras. Uh, where we, st we left off on um, the sacral chakra. So we did the root. It's a sacral. Now we're doing the um, solar plexus, which is lays right here, at least six inches above the navel. <laughs> and Reverend Lee Wallach just, uh, I'm telling you, man, he's a, he's a maniac, dude. What's a maniac? He's like a maniac. He's a, he's a, <laughs> just, he does it. Uh, just watch him, dude. He's funny. He's funny as fuck, man. No judge. I'm not judging. You know, it's just because I'm a maniac myself. So, uh, yeah, man. So the sexual um, energy comes from. Which is probably why it's like I said, I'm a miracle healer, miracle doer. But um, let's keep on going, guys, um, on the chakras. Let's stay focused, your journey. So, um, yeah. So, without any further ado, let's uh, bring out uh, Reverend Lee Wallet. Wall we wait, ready? He's ready. So today, we're going to continue on our series about the seven chakras. And it's part three. So we're going to be focusing on the solar plexus chakra today, okay? The third chakra. Let's just get a revision of what are the chakras. So each chakra is a different frequency, and it governs specific functions within the body. And since we're all energy, the ability to manage our centers is critical to the overall function and balance within our body. You get that? We're mostly out of balance. He, here he brings up a good point. Um, remember, we're always, or majority of the time, we're... Um, not aligned with our chakras. You know, we're always out of balance of one way or another, which is um, homostasis, he calls it, or some, some term he calls it. But, um, so understand that you're constantly working on yourself. And this is what people mean, or this is what, at least what I mean, what I mean by we're always healing, because we're always out of balance. Because when you, even when you're interacting with somebody, you're transferring up energy. You know what I mean? You're getting someone else's perspective, someone else's thoughts, because you're starting to become one. You're, you're merging in the spirit world, like type of thing. And, um, yeah, so, what are you going with that? No fucking idea, dude. So, yeah, man, we're constantly working on ourselves, and we're constantly uh, understanding who we are. So, so let's go in, and um, let's look at the solar plexus chakra. It is a third chakra. It's located six inches above the belly button. So, ladies, this is six inches. Gentlemen, this is six inches. So you have the same measuring stick. Some of you have very, very um, not spiritual minds this morning. But if you can go like that, your solar plexus is right here, okay? This door gave it a little diagram of some sort. You can see what chakras align. If you can start working on it, you can go back to these mantras. And when he mentions about these mantras, just real quick, he mentioned it. What he mentioned was, um, it's not just the mantra, but it's the, the, the sound. Um, bomb, rum, like this one's rum. The, this is the solar plexus chakra, which is yellow, by the way. It's a yellow chakra, and that one is rum. So when you're vibrating, when you're mm, you're giving yourself a frequency, so your cells are vibrating at a certain level. And when you're vibrating at a certain level, and dude, this is a good little experiment that's done, which is synchronicity. Because you know, they put like a little, little TikTok things, they put it on there, and they start clicking. And they put it on top of like I think cans or rollers, and it and and it'll start sinking by itself. Like it gets into synchronicity. As soon as you grab it and put it onto the table, so it comes out of sync because it's it's no longer working together. It's 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 not synchronized. But it, that just to show you the physics of synchronicity. It does exist. It's out there. These are the experiments science is doing to prove understanding of things because. That's something to, new to a lot of us, especially me, understanding spirit, understanding our other senses. We do have other senses. We do have remote viewing. We do are, we are clairvoyant. You know, we are um, telepathic. We are mind readers. We could see it because once you reach all this and you can, the more aligned you are, in other words, what I'm trying to say, the more um, you're going to extend, the more you can see these spiritual gifts. It, it, and a good example that I give, it's like, Kids are outside yelling. My boys out there. Um, it's um, infrared cameras. You know, you can see people's heat. So there's certain type of view. Those are different. It's like the predator. Just like the movie predator. Think about the movie predator like that. Like you know, what I mean, it's it's you're looking through the different the lenses. You know, their lenses. They're 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 that we don't see. The other people, it's like cats, they can see stuff, they can see spirit. Birds, they can see things, they can, they, they, it's, I think sometimes either they see spirit 
or spirit communicates through them just like we channel just like we you know get downloads animals do too in their own way of, of and it's they're leveling up too man because they're leveling up as well this is where it's this is where like i want to understand more of because i know there's more answers to this but that i can't confirm and say yes it is but i already know this stuff but when you hear it through others this is when it validates you okay this type of certifications there and this is correct what you already know is correct and this is where right now everyone is coming together it is an awakening mother guy like i said sent a signal out mother guy sent a signal out because it was going to destroy itself you know because if the world is not balanced or it will destroy itself so with this said it was sent out and this is where you know we're getting this um this how Octorians, you know, the Octorian Council, the Palladians, you know, the whole Galactic Federation, that's where they come into play. You know, that, that I'm understanding the scene. I'm not nowhere near of understanding it completely. It's real, real, it's literally fucking fresh to me. It's all new to me. You know, where I, um, I mentioned before, my profession, my profession in the sense of like where my expertise is at is narcissism, codependency, understanding it, to escape it, and, and heal yourself. Escape it because they're not gonna let you go understand that you they're not once you're a supplier of them and you're a good supply and they know it they're not gonna let you know, they're not gonna let you leave so i'm already 17 minutes into the video of just gossiping small talk so let's stay focused on the solar plexus shopper this yellow belt. presented by the color yellow Okay, so yellow is the color. Remember, the root chakra is red. You've got uh, the sacral chakra was orange. Now we move up into yellow. And you notice that the colors of the chakras um, are the same colors in order that's in the rainbow, just so that you get the, that the same color scheme does flow there. Um, it represents self-esteem, self-confidence, identity, and personal power. That's what this is about. That's where this controls those aspects of us. Solar plexus chakra represents fire, by the way. Its element is fire. And I think the sacral was element of water, I believe it was. So, yeah. So Its element is fire. And as such, it's responsible for regulating the energy, the action, identification, I, the intention and vitality. Hey, have you ever heard someone say, you got any fire in your gut? Did you ever hear that? There's fire burning inside me. I'm, I'm really juiced with fire. I'm lit up. Why? You, the, you, you, your, your third chakra is firing off. It's telling you something. Wait, the solar plexus chakra, it's uh, associated with the traits, the characteristic traits he mentions, which is a wisdom of knowing, of understanding, of being aligned, being in tune. Now, I'm not sure if it's to do with your intuition, but it's 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 a sense of, like, I got this shit, you know, unstoppable. Keep on going, keep on pushing forward, you know. Um, and I believe it does because it has to do with association with the unbalanced one, which is like a, a procrastination. So I think that would make sense there. So like I was saying, um, that's, so let's continue on and let's see what uh, he has to say. The solar plexus, traits of a balanced chakra here. One feels a sense of wisdom, decisiveness, and personal power. When you are in balance, divine wisdom's flowing through you. You know you've got the power within you and you're decisive about it. There is no procrastination, no hesitation. You know, you are, your energy is flowing there. <sighs> So he's talking about traits of an unbalanced chakra or a not balanced chakra. He talks about micromanaging. Now, um, just, you're, you're just constantly a, perf a perfectionist. I think that's what he's trying to say. He's talking about a perfectionist. So let's continue. Traits of an overactive chakra. You may be quick to anger. You have the need to control and micromanage. Greediness and a lack of compassion and empathy. When you are not in balance, you try to over, and you're overactive, you overcompensate. You become a micromanager. You can delegate that. You don't have to control that. And so she's helping me to understand that in my third chakra, I might have some blockage or I might have an overactive thing going on. So let's just recap on what he's talking about. It's talking about the solar plexus chakra and traits of an underactive chakra. Quick to rage, 
the need to control and micromanage what we just talked about uh, and the lack of compassion or empathy so damn, this shit just fucking went to my eyes man So you're quick to rage, you're quick to get mad, you're quick to get angry. You know, you're you're reacting versus responding. You know, this is where the narcissist loves to get you, right? This is because remember, they narcissists or narcissistic people or people who are drama seeking, not that I know anything of this. <laughs> um, it's he's saying it's they want a reaction out of you. So if you're quick to angry, you're reacting, you know, instead of responding. So this is where that whole you need to be looking at. If you're acting or being anything type of this, he also mentions greed. When you're just being greedy, you don't want to share. You know, um, I've noticed that at least it's with. Uh, I'm sorry, a person who grew up with no siblings is what I'm trying to say. Um, and the reason why I say that it's because they don't want to share. They're more greedy. He's like my son. My son is the only child, and he doesn't like to share. You know, or he doesn't like to get rid of things. You know, like toys and stuff. Like no. Like my son, it's gonna be for somebody else. You know, someone else can use it. No, Dad, I want to keep it. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll keep it, and it wouldn't be a problem. See, it's but, more your you, greed comes in, is you don't. Eat, it's because this is something that's installed in you. Remember, this is what I've been trying to teach him. But my son is very stubborn. I have no idea where he gets that from. <laughs> because remember, he met me half when I was asleep, and the other half, which has been this past three years, is me awakening, is me understanding myself. And he sees. I told him. I told him the other day. I said, the way you're growing up, I'm growing up as well because I'm relearning all this stuff. So like it or not, you're going to learn this stuff. So just hear it me now because when, when as you get older, you get... That's a pooch, a pooch fucking... He opens the door. has a key. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Give me a second, man. So yeah, so that part. I don't know what's going with that. I have no idea what the fuck I'm saying. So traits of the underactive chakra is feeling because it's so small writing guys of low self-esteem when i was a part of the ego before before i woke myself well this is what i would tell myself is my self-esteem was high but the self-esteem that i was getting and receiving from people were through external things so that's what fed me then and i had high self-esteem but if you look more deeper into it i did have a lack of self-esteem because at the end at the end of the story it comes out it comes out that because it's that's where you start to become um codependent and traits of an under average or underactive chakra the feeling of low self-esteem, apathy, procrastination, being taken advantage of, indecisive, insecure, timid, and needy. I, I, can you tell when people are needy? Oh, Lord. I am not one that likes to deal with needy. I'm saying it's like the more you align with this, the more of your spiritual gifts you will receive. And I mean you receive because it's in you. You're unlocking it. And the more you in tune with it, the more you start to listen to it, which is your intuition, your higher self, you're going to be guided the right way as I'm learning and as I'm seeing. So let's go back on. Oh, he goes on with needy people or neediness. That's codependency huge. That is codependency big time. That's most definitely because I'll tell you why. <sighs> You want to feel wanted. You want to feel as you're needed. You know, that was one thing with um, my, when I was being discarded, was just like, I'm no longer needed. I'm no longer wanted. You know, I was even going to the part of like, just use me. And this is how I understand how people and, and, and can get trapped in that talk situation because they're, they're, you're, they're, you're wanted or at least you're wanted or when it comes to females, just, you know what I mean, putting out and giving their body away should i say just for the pleasure of pleasure of someone else as well yeah they gain pleasure but pleasure of someone else's that's where um you know because you've, you're you feeling needed I'm, I'm wanted so that people like me they i'm the center of attention you know I'm, um and that's where you have to work on yourself this is a defiant self-love comes into play of loving you for who you are and all of yourself and the more you respect yourself this is where respect comes in play because you respect yourself others will respect you how can you expect respect when you can't respect yourself you know you the way you treat yourself is the way others are going to treat you and they're going to test you, by the way. 
Because of what are you allowing? What are you accepting? And so your boundaries come play. So let's stay focused here. Which reminded me, and reminded me to add, it's just because when you feel wanted, you know, you're being needy. You're, 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 you're needing someone to validate you, to validate your feelings, to validate because since you don't know how to do it because you're the one who's lacking this part. Which is, like I mentioned, this is your story, plexus chakra. And um, there's more to it, but I just lost it. So let's just, that's what I'm saying. You're looking for validation. Did I mention that? I probably did. So when you're seeking validation from other people or other places. So this is where like, um, it's big, I believe. And the reason why it brings me up because of borderlines. So borderlines, that's where it's, they want to feel needed and stuff. So I believe this is where the borderlines come in because it's, it, and um, it, it just is not, because my imagination is right now is really sexual. So it's, um, this is where I think, you know, um, swinging comes in. And like gang bangs and stuff like that <laughs> um, or uh, uh, yeah because y you become the center of attention you're the one that's wanted especially that well that's the mindset you start how do I and this how do I know this I'm telling you I must have fucking been a swinger in my past life why I've never experienced it in this life. I would like to be badass it'll be an experience <laughs> but it's not something I'm seeking you know, but I can see where people seek this just to get that feeling, just to get that um, 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 feeling of attention, of neediness, of that you are wanted. There you go, that you're wanted, but it's gonna go away. And how I know? Because it's it's like pleasure. It's, it goes back to the other chakra of pleasure. You know, um, it's once that pleasure's gone, once once it's let it leaves, you're left by yourself. And this is where the walk of shame comes in. I remember in my college days, you know, where the women had to take the walk of shame through the hall the next morning when they're sober after all the um, high comes down. You know, because it's only temporary. All that shit's only temporary before it, you come back crashing down or going back to the hole where you're digging yourself into a bigger hole because you were ignoring it. You can't ignore it. You could ignore it, but it's going to come back. It's going to manifest again. So you have to acknowledge this. This is where the inner work comes into play. So... Let's continue. Hope that makes sense. I don't know where the fuck that came out of, or if you had to do anything with it. But so it just things I just mentioned, you know, so I can see that part. But um, no, oh, yeah, because this reminds me. This reminds me of the mother of my child, you know, um, because if you meet her, she looks, she comes up, comes off as she's very confident, she's very high in self-esteem. But I know deep down inside, she's lacking that part because this is. I shouldn't be saying her story, but when I, well, it's our story, so I'm allowed to say it. When I met her, um, that was one of her things, is was that, um, that I seen is her lack of self esteem because uh, at the end of the nights, you know, after a night of going out, um, she would, when I first met her, this is when I first met her, she would break down a lot, break down and literally go to the closet and start crying. And um, would say things in the start, or yeah. it's all external, you know, it's all external stuff. Or why can't I keep a boyfriend, Johnny? Because remember, she was my best friend, dude. I want, people to understand that part is she was my best friend somewhat is because we share a son but it's um get to when it comes to self-esteem things like that so the next thing he says is uh let's see sorry procrastination uh we already mentioned procrastination you know the will not getting up not doing a thing so this is where i found really big i think it's either the first five to seven seconds but act on it if you get a motivation or, or something to do, if it's to go uh, for a walk, if it's to do your homework, to do the next video, to brush your teeth, to take a shower, to, to any action, just act with it within the next, with the first five to seven seconds, from my understanding, seconds. You, you, you'll start doing it, you start getting on it. This is where it's been helping me in the aspects to overcome procrastination is just acting on it. Not to mention David Lyons has been helping me a lot when it comes to what to act on. You know, to act on the thing that inspires you the most, all right, being taking advantage of it. Stop being a bitch. Um, what I mean by stop being a bitch is, is stop letting yourself stick up for yourself. And I think I already mentioned this part about what um, Jordan Peterson says about whole being the monster thing. I'll post a video if I can. I'll even add it to this clip if I can in regards to what he says and explains it of, of become the monster and then understand how to control it. You know, uh, um, it's like the whole thing of the meek shall inherit the earth. You know, carry your sore sheath, but learn, learn how when to use it. Learn when to be a fucking badass. Understand it, you know, because it's it. This is where the whole shadow integration comes into play. Because if you're too timid and being a pushover, they're gonna take advantage of you. They're gonna fucking eat you alive. And that's one thing I learned here, big in the hood, in the ghetto, or where I'm at here, is you cannot let yourself stick up for yourself. No matter the bully is big, stick up for yourself. You mean because at least when the next 
time the bully wants to bully, he's going to think twice to look your way. He's going to think twice to look your way. I mean, he's going to go well for a week or pray in his life that he sees that he believes. And they're the ones who are weak, by the way. I talk fast. It's just a way to get it all out. Because that's how much stuff and information that's processing in my head that I need to speak that fast to, to edit, get it out, 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 get it out. Because I forget, dude. I will fucking forget. I'll get off topic and then I go in La La Land. And so, decisive. Oh, man, that's okay. That's that's big with me. Indecisiveness. Being indecisive. Why? Because we're used to other people telling us what to do. We're used to other people, you know, we're, we're used to always living off of someone else. We're reflections of the person. We Go based upon what the situation is or how it's turning out for we can manipulate it into our advantage, into our things, into our things. That's what we're always looking ahead. We're two, three steps. Do you mean, um, chess, dude? I, I, um, I don't like to brag on that, but I'm pretty fucking badass when it comes to chess. Why? Because it's just something that I like. The only one who could beat me literally um, is like my brother. I think my brother was the only other one. Meaning as in like out of five games, be three, two. Or reverse, but he usually gets a better end of it, you know. Um, but I, I, I like talking about how to play chess. So yeah, man, oh, I know a little bit. Or I forgot. I underestimate myself on purpose. <laughs> all the why? Uh, be why? Because I love being underestimated. I love to be underestimated. Why? Because when we try our best, we fucking it, we blow people's minds, and that's. Uh, a tactic. It's a tactic, meaning as in like your dead. opponent is going to take you lightly. They're going to take you as a pushover. As I'm saying, they take you as a pushover. So when you under have the when you have your opponent underestimate you, you're going to kick their fucking ass every fucking single time, dude. Why? Because you're bringing your fucking A game. You're bringing everything you got, and they're going to bring their half-assed game. They're not going to train for the thing. They're going to they're going to underestimate you, and that is fucking key and big that I have learned in life is is have your opponent always underestimate you think that don't brag about it don't boast about it just keep to yourself and just show your best give it your fucking all and believe and this is where it comes to when it comes to competitiveness as well you know um it's not competing against the person it's competing against yourself in the sense of being the best version of yourself being better than you were yesterday you know and when they say you know become the best is don't be better than everybody. Be better than you. Be better than what you were, like I was mentioning, and, and, and you will exceed because if you are always just competing with yourself, well, dude, you're, you're, you're consistently going to be winning. Or, and if not, it's your bar. You, you, you get to adjust your bar if you need to. You know, but um, yeah, man. So that's about that part. So anyway, so I'm coming in right now. Just thinking about how to come in. Let me see. Um, yeah, of course, of course. Does it cost you one huggies before you leave? So you guys, I'm trying to fix it, so I'm trying to fix it. You got it? Yeah. Okay, so, um, and being, um, so indecisive, like I mentioned, is because we're used to people telling us what to do, and, you know, we don't know where to go. You give me huggies, you give me huggies. Love you. I get my, that's how I get my huggies. That's how I manipulate them. That's my manipulation. <laughs> I love that kid, man. I love that kid. I don't know the biggest reasons why I'm, biggest reasons why I push forward. It's one of the biggest reasons why I want to make my achievements for I can show him no matter what, my son, no matter what will happen, no matter what you see me go through. It, man, he see me go through my awakening. He understood it. And like I told him the last time, you know, um, the way you're growing, my son, I am growing too. And I'm understanding myself, you know, so just learn from me, learn from your dad, because I'm not going to steer you wrong. Why? Because I want the best for you, you know, because you are better than me, by the way. I tell him, you are better than me. I tell him all the time, you're better than me, my son. I want you to understand that you are better than me and your mom because you have the best parts of me and the best parts of your mom. So you're, it's, you're, you're, you're superhuman. Remember that, you know. So this is the type of stuff that I'm trying to do in his head. But it's difficult when you have the other party. Not that she's narcissistic. It's just that she's a codependent herself, an empath with a narcissist. And she's in that codependent trap of not understanding it. Because when as soon as I bring this up, as soon as I start talking about this, she hates it. She defends her narcissist. Tells me I'm crazy. And, well, she doesn't. She stopped the crazy part already. That's good. You know, because she understands I'm not fucking vulnerable. Because she knows I'm not bullshitting. She understands it. She knows what she's in. But she sees it as in she's being, con she, I have control of the situation. And I'm still doing what I want. Which is fine for her. More great for her. But it's my son. 
It's my son that's being affected as well. Fuck you. Do what you want to do. You, you're gonna you're 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 gonna wake up sooner or later. Believe me, you're gonna wake up. Like it or not, you're gonna fucking wake up. But it's my son that's being affected. And that's just a part where I don't know what to do. I've done what everything I can. But just um, you know I mean do my part in other words. I'm just doing my part in regards to this part. So just stay focused here and uh let's continue on. I guess the minister's doing a little preaching today. The key characteristics of the solar plexus. The chakra is associated with the following behavioral characteristics. Expression of will. You notice I just talked about my expression of will. Intellectual abilities, ability to think beyond, the ability to question, the ability to, to formulate your own answers. The part of the mind that categorizes everything. The part that assesses the pluses and assesses the minuses. That's in here as well. Personal power. Also the ability to bring ideas and plans into action. And it conveys wisdom. So now this is the key characteristics of the solar plexus. Solar plexus, yeah, chakra. The solar plexus chakra is associated with the following behavior characteristics. Expression of will, uh, which is like the will could be years. anything, but I, the way he brings it up, it's the will to speak up for yourself, to will to ask questions. That's what he explains it, but it can also be the will, the drive, what, what, what gets you going, but it just depends on how you see that part. So that's that part. Intellectual, intellectual abilities, um, how smart you are to perceive things, interpret them. And, and, and see your options is the way I see that part at least. So what happens when the chakra is in balance? Excessive control and use of authority. Also, or the opposite of that, feeling of helplessness. Being obsessed with minute details. Ooh, stop smiling, Debbie. What happens when the solar plexus chakra is unbalanced? So it's excessive control and use of authority. And uh, this is like I mentioned before, you know what I mean? Uh, when the root chakra is being mentioned of uh, cricket as cops, uh, of fucking um, politics, of uh, people just using, um, if you're at work and you're a boss, taking advantage of other just taking a, you're, you're just abusing your power. You're abusing um, the lack of somebody else's intelligence not to understand what's really going on at the moment. If you ask me, that's what that means. Um, or opposite feeling of helplessness. You know, when you just don't know what to do, you feel, um, this is where your toxic relationships comes in because they'll make you feel helpless, they'll make you feel like shit. And this is where you have to understand this part, get this part balanced. So, so and then like he was mentioning, you know, um, being obsessed with my, being obsessed with minute details which is like the micromanaging being a perfectionist because narcissists are professionals by the way they're, they're, they're they or they used to try to be because they're trying to hide their un, their, their own security they're trying to hide what what's really um partaking so you know um not that i'm a perfectionist by the way <laughs> that's how i get uh which is oh i didn't i didn't do my editing right oh um i have to go back and the the timing was off or I didn't um, say something and you know, you tend, and guess what? If they didn't like me, you, you, you tend not to even do it or you like, you put it off and it'll just never get done, you know, because of that, the little blocks. So it's okay, make mistakes. You know, as you, you know, if you go back to my beginning of my videos, man, they're nothing like they are now. You know, they were very, dude, I was fucking rocked on my mind, but um, <laughs> rocked on my mind. I was going through narcissistic abuse, man. It was, uh, that's, that's gonna be a part of my story as I'm gonna speak it. Manipulative. You ever been manipulated? Have you ever tried to manipulate anyone? How many people in here have ever been in a relationship? <laughs> Was there manipulation going on at some point or some time on both sides? Darn right, aren't we? Because why? We're living in conditional love, which means if you do what I want, I'll be happy, and I like when you do what I want, but I'm going to have a perpetual need for you to do what I want, and that never is going to work. And it says manipulative, you know, um, which we all do, man, you know, especially if you're toxic, codependent, like I used to be, then yes, you manipulate in your own way because you want to get... All a, a codependent is, you're a half narcissist because you still have feelings, you still have emotions, you are a, 
a problem solver. You don't want to go through it, but it's they're they're fucking with you. They're tricking you. They're they're making you believe otherwise. And since you're lacking that sense of identity, they try to give it to you. And the one they're giving you is to their benefit. By the way, you know this is where manipulation comes into play. And it's big, and I'm sure we all know about this. So I can go on forever on this part, but it's I think I've touched on it already in my other ones video. So let's go on to the next one. Also, misusing your power. You see this happen a lot when it's imbalanced that people misuse their power. Is misusing a power, which I believe is the same thing as excessive control uh, and the use of authority. You know, mis the misusual part, uh, the best way I can describe that comes to mind, it's like what was happening with me, you know, um, in the sense of the person, let's just say um, the cricket ass cop was using his um, taxpayer dollars, taxpayers money, to fund his own fucking, that's misuse of power. You know, um, g government, what's going on with politics right now? You mean, you're, uh, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're misusing your power. I don't need to explain that too much. Um, lack of clear direction. That's something that's me there because you have to get what I've learned from this part. Let me put the mic in. Okay, we're mic'd up now. Sorry about that, guys. So I already mentioned, um, the misusing of power and the excessive control and use of authority. Well, we know where that comes from. Um, I already mentioned it's kind of one of them saying there. Um, and he puts a lack of clear direction, which um, I'm guilty of. Why? Because we don't uh, give ourselves goals. Because, well, at least me, I never was really taught what goals are. And the aspect of like, you know, um, set an attention and don't worry about the how and why. You know, the why and how, that's where divine comes in. That's when spirit comes in. That's regarding angels. And that's where um, the whole, it will happen for itself. Just give yourself a target. Focus on it. It's just kind of like the whole, um, keep your eye on the price. And the best part, you are the price. Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. You know, what is it that you have to achieve? Now, let's, that's more self-work. But if this is more for the 3D world, if you want to manifest something, a house or a car or or uh, materialistic, is just know it's there. See the people who have it or, or are working on it. See what they're doing and then adjust yourself to it. There I go again, looking this way. <laughs> I look this way. Uh, isn't what it is? Okay, let's stay focused here. So, um, yeah. That's a part of... Um, the lack of direction, a clear direction, and there's something that I'm learning and I'm understanding now is give yourself an attention, make your, make a decision. This is, goes back to earlier what he was speaking about, okay? So that's that part. Is that there's a divine wisdom in us and we call it intuition. That wisdom will tell us what we need to do next. All we have to do is listen, but most of the time we're not listening. We're talking too much. We tend to talk more than we listen. Let me ask you this question. How many mouths do you have? How many ears do you have? So you should be listening twice as much as you speak.